So in this video, we're going to be learning about the last stage of making our interpreter, and that's the part where we actually execute our code. And this part's actually much simpler than the parsing part of our interpreter because we generated an abstract syntax tree, which is what these round brackets denote. We have the root node, which is in this case divide. Then we have our first child and our second child. So the way we execute our program is we get our tree from the parser, we store it in a variable and we pass it to our execute class along with our environment, which is how we keep track of variables and functions. So to execute our program, if we scroll up, you can see we execute it by calling this walk tree method and we pass the syntax tree to it. This is a recursive method. So we walk the parse tree by recursively going into the tree. So we call walk tree, we pass the entire tree to it. So here is an example. Here is a small tree that says add number one and number two together. So we pass that tree to walk tree. It's gonna go through these if statements and it's gonna say that the root of our tree is the add keyword. So we scroll down, we see that the root of our tree is add, that means what we wanna do is add the node on the left and the node on the right together. And that's what, exactly what we're gonna do. But you can see here, we're not just returning node one and node two, we're recursively calling walk tree before we add node one and node two. That's because in our small example, we don't know if the children are broken down as much as they can be. For example, we can add together number one and number two. Those are broken down as much as they can be. But say we wanted to add A and B. Now they're not actually broken down as much as possible because we have our add function, but now we've got var a and var b. And these themselves are small trees. So because they're small trees, we need to go into those trees. And in this case, we need to figure out the value of a and the value of b. So in the first example, we would actually just be adding node one and node two. We wouldn't need to call walk tree again. But in the second example, we would because we don't know the value of a or the value of b. We just know that they're variables. So before we can add them, we need to call walk tree. And what walk tree will do is run itself again. This time, the root of the tree will be the var keyword. And what we're going to do is we're going to look up the variable and return its value from our environment. Now when we return the value, so say a equals 1, b equals 2, and a plus b. So the reason that worked is because we first got a and got b. We recursively accessed those variables. We got the value out of our environment. Then it's going to start to return all the values that it's found. And it's going to work its way up until it gets back to this add function here where we can add the two numbers together. So the reason we call this recursively is because we have to keep breaking down the values over and over and over until we get to their simplest form. And then once we know what the actual value is, we can add them together. So you can see what we're doing is we're calling the add operation. We have the A variable on the left and the B variable on the right. But we don't know what those values are, so for A we have to go another level down, we have to figure out its value, and once we do that we realise A is a number, it's 1. We do the same for B, and you can see that in the tree. And once we have the two primitive values, all we need to do next is go back to the top and add them together. So here's a simple function definition, and if we look at our variables we can see there's the function name, and here is the syntax tree that represents that function. And to call that function, all we do is we give the function a name, we call the function, and that gives us our syntax tree, which is what we get here, and we call walk tree on that, and once again the function calls itself over and over and over again, and that is how we execute our program. If we look quickly at the if statement, we can see something similar. The first thing we do is we figure out the result of the if statement. So if we look at our function, what we did is we created an if statement. So here's the if statement, here's the condition. So that is the node with the ID of one. So what we're saying here is get the condition, and we don't know if the condition needs to be broken down anymore. So we're gonna call walk tree, and that's gonna walk the tree for us. So what it's gonna do is it's going to see the condition equal equal operation. It's gonna find it here in the function, and it's going to compare the two values. So in this case, it's gonna compare 10 with 10, which doesn't need to be broken down anymore. But if we had to use variables, we would walk tree would get called again, and that would scroll all the way down here. It would look up the value of the variables, return the answer on this side, and then it would return the answer on this side, and then it would compare them, giving us the answer. So that will give us the result, which tells us if the if statement was true or false. Then we check the result, and we just say, if it's true, we want to execute the first branch, otherwise the second branch. And this whole setup is very dependent on how you designed your tree, but this is how we designed our tree, and this is why we execute it like this. But that's pretty much it. What we've ended up with is a real interpreter that lexes properly, parses properly, and all we do is walk the tree to execute the code, and that is how real interpreters and compilers work. So hopefully you learned a lot. The code for all of this will be in the description. It'll also be on the High Code GitHub page. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.